Survival rates for combat wounded are higher than ever before, and that means many more service members are coming home with severe injuries, such as the loss of a limb. For those who suffer an upper extremity loss, there's new hope on the horizon. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, is funding a long-term effort to build a state-of-the-art prosthetic arm. Marine Sergeant Ashley Bryant tells us the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago is driving the medical end. And the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab is working to put better prosthetics within Wounded Warrior's reach. It feels more real than, than I ever expected it to. It was, it was actually surprising the first time I put this arm on, I was kind of creeped out um, at how it would hold on to things. Claudia Mitchell lost her real arm in a motorcycle accident. The former Marine is helping a team of doctors, engineers, researchers, and scientists reach into the future. This is affectionately referred to as Prototype 1, and it works using targeted muscle re which combines a surgical procedure with state-of-the-art sensors and electronics. Dr. Todd Quicken pioneered the surgery. And the idea is that we take the leftover nerves that used to go to the arm and transfer them to different muscles and skin. So for example, with a shoulder disarticulation patient, we've taken the four main nerves that go down the arm and transferred them onto different chest and side muscles. But are you making that work just by thinking it? That's it. This is the best arm to date that they have, but this is going to be the best arm. Jesse Sullivan used to work as a lineman for a Tennessee power company. Uh, and I got into 7,200 volts, and uh, it burnt both my arms and uh, breaker operated, so I took it twice. Went up one arm, out the other one. Should have gone to the cemetery, should have buried me. Uh, I always like to think divine intervention that God knew that Dr. Kiken needed a guinea pig. Jesse was the first to undergo the innervation surgery. Watch this video of Jesse's muscle movements. The black marks are where electrodes are placed, which measure muscle signals. Those signals are then passed to the mechanical arm. It's tricky because the prosthetic must fit, despite all that movement, very closely, so the electrodes stay in constant contact with the skin. I'm doing just like you do. Like, it's like for, to raise the elbow, I just lift, lift my elbow, my phantom. Just by doing my phantom limb, turn the palm up. New developments need to be tested, so Jesse and Claudia are often asked to come to the lab. So uh, we have a, a few minutes of learning curve every time we, we interact with each other. Okay, Jesse, I'm ready to arm wrestle. All right. I'm going to take you. This session marks the beginning of phase two of the project. The goal is to get more natural control of the arm and essentially <laughs> to get the nerve remapping to work in reverse. It's called targeted sensory re -innervation. Sensory feedback is very, very important, uh, not, so that we can, not only so we can detect uh, touch and temperature and, and contact and vibration and so forth, but also just force, the force of gripping something. You want to crush your styrofoam cup, for example. Well, when we transfer those nerves, we can also um, cut the nerve to overlying skin so it goes numb, and then the hand nerves will grow into it. So that when you touch this chest skin, the patient feels like they're touching their hand. Claudia, what, what do you feel right there? In the index finger. And how about over here? Pinky. And up there? Thumb. And that's kind of a hard one to get your head around, but it's a portal into the sensory system for us. That was a little lower than that. Anyhow, there's a spot where if you touch it, Claudia feels her finger moving back. So imagine having a sensor in the prosthetic yeah. hand that when you pick up a cup, yeah. it tells you when you've touched the cup and then how hard you're squeezing. And we take that signal and bring it up to something that pushes on this skin. The first time I noticed that I was in the shower and I felt warm water and I could feel the heat in my hand. And so I hurried up and I finished my shower and I called Dr. Kike and I was like, it's working, it's working, I feel my hand. I don't like it. I wish I had my arms back, you know, but being as I have to wear prosthetics and given the opportunity to be a part of a project that's going to improve prosthetics from, now, from here on out for the future is it, what an honor it is. But someday I'd like for this to be hanging in the Smithsonian and somebody walk by and say, God, wouldn't you hate it to wear that? 
you know, it's look how far they've come. So the future is, to me, is this is the beginning of the future. Again, that was Sergeant Ashley Bryant reporting. Prototype 1 is still pretty far away from production. It won't go into clinical trials for two more years.